call back down to Smoky Bay Oysters. See if Josie and Linton are here this time. Hope so. More oysters for Kev. Some sweet chili crab for dinner. I did eight uh, oysters, Kilpatrick, and a couple of whiting fillets and some chips. That's dinner. This is doing it tough. I don't know how long we can deal with this, <laughs> but we'll have a go. Well, this is our last day here. So we'll get out and have a quick fish for a little while and then we'll start packing up. Pretty nice out here this time of day, but it's a bit cool. And it was about 12 or 13 degrees when we left the caravan. Only three weeks ago we were down at where was it? Fitzgerald Bay, it was 43 degrees. It was a big difference. This morning it's 12. 12, is it? Lovely. Not really. The last go at getting a few blue swimmer crabs today. Getting rid of all the old whiting heads and fillets or the frames. Not the fillets, we eat the fillets. Getting rid of all the whiting frames. Definitely not a pleasant morning out here, that's for sure. It's a bit fresh. Not going too far from the boat ramp today. Because it's going to get windy. Real windy. Well, the fishing's pretty slow out here today. We've got one whiting sitting out here. The wind is whistling through and it's about 12 degrees. So, don't think we're going to be out here too long. What do you reckon? Mm. <laughs> it's miserable. Cold. <laughs> Gotta have rocks in your head being out here doing this. Oh, so far we've only got two whiting. We're gonna go and check the pots. I don't know how much longer we'll be out here because it is cold and miserable. Just thinking about a nice warm cup of coffee when we go in. Maybe with a bit of rum. <laughs> <laughs> So we got uh, two blue swimmer crabs out of that first pull of the pots and we got two nice whiting in there. The one on the right should be about 35 I'd reckon, that one's about 31. Oh, there we go, one more for the esky, that's three nice blueies this morning. Pretty nice size. This is mad. Time to give it away. All right, we're just doing the last little bit of a pack up at Smoky Bay. And the wind's dropped off and they reckon the next few days will be glorious. They're talking 27, 28 degrees and hardly any wind. We've had our fair share of it this last few days. So we've washed it all down, just got to put the boat up on the roof. And take the trailer apart back at the camp. Yeah. The fat wheels work the treat on the boat trailer, but we're going to have to rethink things because we need to lose some weight. Yeah, well, we might have to change up the trailer, hey? I think we will. Because those mangrove jack ones are 38 kilos. This thing's a hell of a lot more than that. All right. We'll go back to camp. Go back and finish packing up. As usual, the day we leave, it is absolutely glorious. And all the tinnies out here fishing for whiting. Hardly a breath of wind. Sad to leave, but anyway, we've got to get home and get some things done. But we've got one more stop on the way at Smoky Bay Oysters. If you like our videos and the content, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Oh, good look at that little tractor. Yeah, I'll tell you what we'll do to stop them getting away, we'll park right across in front of it. That yeah. way they have to sell us some oysters. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs>
12 dozen. I love to watch the process of engrading the oysters. There's a lot more to it than you would think, and there's a lot of very expensive machinery in use. The first part of the grading process is the trommel screen. Knocks the frills off the edge of the oyster, off the shell. Then it's checked out by hand, just for quality control. The rest of the process is done by machines. Where they're weighed and sized, once they hit the conveyor belt, after they've been checked over again by the machine, they then blast it off the conveyor belt into their right size bag. The time and the effort, and also the machinery, is incredible in growing oysters. We did have a chance to check out the new oyster barge. Well, it was time to head for home. It was a bit of a sad thing, because we had planned on being away for quite a while yet, but we needed to get our solar and our battery system sorted out. Grain paddocks down here, aren't they huge? Massive. This is a little town of Kimba we go through. It's got the big galah and the sign that says halfway across Australia. So we'll go and have a quick look at that. The amount and the sheer size of some of these grain silos is incredible. They must hold thousands upon thousands of tons of grain. And there's Port Augusta. Look at those hills behind them. Oh, that's the road we should have been taking. Yeah, Coobapedia would have loved to have gone there, but having a bit of... Uh, electrical problems. Yeah, electrical problems, so another time. But tonight we're heading towards Peterborough. Peterborough RV Park. Big open area. We'd only gone a short distance when we realised we hadn't filled up our Yeti cups with our morning coffee. Stopped at Peterborough. Kevin made a friend. This is like right on the main street there. It's chook walking around this park. Like we just pull up to make a cuppa and there's chooks here. So where it's come from, <laughs> it's very friendly. It is very friendly. <laughs> Look at the old houses. Look at the old house there. That was my finger. <laughs> it's on our way home. Not too far out of Broken Hill. big uh, overpass for the train line in the middle of nowhere. Well, this is a little town of Cockburn. It's on the border between South Australia and New South Wales and it's about 40 odd kilometres to Broken Hill. And now coming into New South Wales. Broken Hill. The amount of feral goats we came across in the next few hours was incredible. It's just millions of goats. They're just on both sides of the road everywhere. Everywhere. In the paddock there, there's just 
hundreds of them. There's, there's that many, it's just ridiculous. Have a look in there. Yep, look at that. They're just unbelievable. We turned off Cobar heading north towards Burke. The amount of goats just blew us away. We've never seen them this thick before. Just a quick little overnight stop. We pulled up here late last night. It was just on dark, so we're not getting away too early this morning. It's just an old gravel pit. And we leave it as we found it. Take our rubbish with us, and it won't get closed for everybody else. Coming into Gundawindi, and into Queensland. <laughs> 